Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to some Age of Empires casting. Today I bring you an Empire Wars match, played on Mountain Dunes, and currently of course a lot of pros are focusing on Empire Wars because of Red Bull Wololo that's on the way, and you can qualify through the Empire Wars ranked ladder. So here in the red, playing as the Khmer, we have one of the most famous players in Age of Empires 2, who requires almost no introductions. We have the Lord Doubt, one of the main pillars of the Age of Empires community, who's been a top player for a really long time, amazing player. But facing against Doubt, we have another huge name. Currently, in this ranked ladder, at the time I'm recording this, he is number one. We have MBL, so two giants of Age of Empires facing against each other. The map is Mountain Dunes. You can see both of them start in a hilly terrain. There's no good world lines to expand, only these neutral resources with some stones, some gold, some berries, and this mode, Empire Wars, is very fast paced. You can see players already starting feudal with some buildings, and we see MBL right from the start is going for archers, while Doubt is adding some scouts with the Khmer, and Khmer versus Britons, of course Khmer are very versatile, they can garrison the villagers inside houses to protect them. They require no buildings, no prerequisite buildings. Of course, in Empire Wars, I don't think that bonus is as important as in Arabia. But um, very versatile Siv, their farms are one of the most efficient farms, if not the most efficient farms in the game. You don't require to drop off food and ooh, right away Dot loses a scout, loses a lot of HP on the other not finding a lot of damage and MBL doing a great job walling this right away to deny the pressure and uh, but yeah the Khmer very efficient farms very efficient eco and a uh, solid sieve one of the top sieves in the game in my opinion very versatile with bonuses that help you a lot here we have MBL playing with the Britons they have cheaper TCs which is quite a nice eco bonus they gather food from herdables faster but when you see Britons, you think archers. And even though it is predictable that Britons will play archers, they are so strong and with the increased range in the hands of a pro, they become even more solid. They are such a strong unit, so dominant, that even if your opponent expects it, they need to do their best to counter it. So both of these are amazing sieves. Britons play more one style and they dominate it. They want to go with the longbows, they want to add a castle, then go get traps with Warwolf, while the Khmer are more versatile, you can see them playing almost any style, of course they have great scorpions, great ballista elephants for the late game, uh, they can add a lot of light care for raiding with the uh, eco bonuses from the farms, so I am very curious to see so how this match will will pan out. Greaton. We see Doubt is the player that takes the initiative on going on the offensive. Of course, with the heal bonuses, this map is hard to pressure. Both of them click up to castle quite at the same time. And this map, I see, it favors a little bit of defensive play at first, but then resources are quite limited. We see the archers here pressuring back. Of course, MBL's um, archers do have fletching, so they are very efficient, while uh, Dot only has padded archer armor, he has fletching now, but after the fight has been taken. Now this number of skirms will neutralize the any archer pressure that's coming. And the Khmer already with such a, a vast economic lead, that's because he's forcing some idle work time, and the Khmer are very efficient with their eco, so a little bit of an advantage to doubt, but at this point in the game, statistics can be misleading, so let's see how the game evolves, and let's see what they are going to go for once they hit Castle Age. That's where the options open, we see MBL having a stable, so it could be uh, archers and scouts, that's quite a common build. Yeah, we see scouts being added right away, you have the archers for the wood and gold, and then the scouts for the... to spend some food, you want to spend all of your eco. Doubt, first to reach castle, and expands right away to this 
neutral area. Of course, Doubt is very well known for his castles, the Doubt castles, so there's, e there's even a, an achievement in game referencing that, so this tone will be very appealing. We see the skirmishers, they keep applying some pressure, they are both even in military, even in economy. 3 versus 2 seconds of LTC time. And some knights are added by the Britons, and this will do great against the, the skirmishers. Sometimes at lower elos, people think, oh, I'm going knights, I need to add a ton of knights. Sometimes just one knight can make engagement so much more efficient for you. You don't need to mess a unit to go for that unit. Sometimes one or two are enough to, to swindle the game, uh, the flavor of the game, in your favor. And we see some crossbows being at 30c from Doubt. Of course, he does fall behind in military. He's going for the expansion. Uh, MBL also adds a second TC, but in a safer position. And MBL starting to get quite a scary mess of archers. They are crossbows now, they have Balcanero. So these can start melting villagers so fast. The skirmishers are lying in wait. Some stables to meet the opponent's knights as well. And now, yeah, the player who is on the offensive in this map has a huge disadvantage. I think MBL doesn't know about the, the side Yay, TCs. Yay. Yeah, yeah, no idea. If he knew, this is so. They, these positions are so easy to pressure. Doubt went with the grief, and he's being rewarded. And Yell, of course, trying to pick off some villagers now. And this is what I say when crossbows are upgraded. Villagers are staying second, but we see the Khmer bonus being used it at lower elos. Players always forget that this exists. At higher elos, yes, I'm being pressured, I can just hop into a house. That's such a good bonus to have. We see a monastery being added right next to the relic, and this will increase the pressure, even though he's playing against a lot of ranged trash, which is not where the monks shine, but they can get one or two knight conversions. We see the stables with two knights, still garrison. A siege workshop being added, and yeah, monk, siege, and crossbow, that's the kind of pressure you want when you really want to start dealing damage to your opponent, you are both in castle age and you want to ensure that you can start pressuring your opponent's base, gathering map control with the relics. And I do wonder when will MBL find out about the side bases. Yeah, he still has no vision, maybe the monk, they have such a huge line of sight. Yeah, the monk will see at least the villagers. Will the monk see that you see? Yes! Yeah, but I think he, he spots that. And now he knows he with that siege. That's a, a great expansion to pressure. And there's another one in, in the north. Uh, doubt with the TC advantage. That's starting to slowly expand into an economy advantage. He is housed for a little bit. Yeah, and he saw the, the bottom base and probably he feels like that's a better place to pressure. And we see a castle going up by MBL. MBL going on the offensive, moving forward with all of his army and dropping a, a, a castle right in the face of Doubt's expansion. And Doubt does not have the stone yet to drop his own castle. And we see here Doubt's greed of expanding to both sides and everything is being punished. The castle will be very hard to deal with. We see the skirmishers going in, we see some scorpions that really help in damaging the crossbows. Ooh, nice dodge. We see, yeah, the monks. R2, counter the knights, ah, he loses two. And yeah, crossbows can, and especially British crossbows, are amazing against the uh, mangonels. When you are playing skirms, it's very hard to deal with the mangoes. And the villagers repair, 
the castle does range the TC, and this is 15 villagers. Doubt has 12 villager lead, but if this gets pressure, if they, they get deleted, with the army there, good engagement by Doubt. One conversion? Okay, only one conversion. And monks at high level are such a stronger unit compared to lower heals. Yeah. Oh, but now, oof, just one hit away. And we see. Oh, ho, 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 yes! Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> we see one of Dalt's famous castles. I'm glad <laughs> I picked the right match to, to cast. Because this is textbook Dalt Castle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the green. <laughs> The foundation does stay up. Without getting some chain barding armor and BL. And the third TC over here next to the castle and British TCs are cheaper. That's a, a nice eco bonus that people tend to forget. forget. Oh, I, uh, yes, this is MBL now finishing the. destroying the castle foundations. Ooh! Another Mango now goes down and that's quite a number of knights, but the crossbows do have the heal advantage. They are all fighting around the castle foundation. Ooh. Ah, this is, I was about to say if this was Doubt's Mangonel. Yeah, the monks. And he is forced to delete the unit. Doubt, even though he still has this foundation over here, now he has enough eco to drop another castle. Well, MBL is not harvesting stone over here. Doubt does keep the villager lead up, but he's falling behind on the military. A defensive castle here to secure the stone, because stone means more castles. <laughs> I mean, pl players get their reputations for a reason. Ooh, some Yay. good... Scorpion hits here could make this army a lot less threatening. Nothing happens. Is he here a little bit of pressure? Uh, just a knight attacking a house. Okay, okay. Ready. Here a ram being destroyed by two villagers. And here the main army. That's yeah, four mangonels. Five with this one. This is a scary army. Yeah, Mangonels. Oof. Yeah, Mangonel and Crossbow is a very strong uh, combo with the Britons. So the Mangonels targeting the Knights. MBL with complete military domination right now. Will Talt drop under the defensive castle? What will be the play here? Talt is under so much pressure. Yeah, the knights keep falling down, the crossbows, 20 crossbows, that's already a very scary number. Yeah, and the defensive castle is required. A lot of villagers adding it, you need this castle to go up, you need to defend your main base. So even though Doubt has the villager lead, he is, and he has 2k plus uh, resources collected, he is under so much pressure. Does an amazing job at keeping the idle PC time low. Oh, MBL floating a lot of gold, not a lot on food. Lacking probably on the farm department. Yeah. Because I was about to say, a lot of gold could be a sign of going in, but with the lack of food, or you either use a market to balance it. I prefer Doubt's economy, the, the balance of it. And of course, you can see the food go broom because he's playing with the Khmer and farms are super efficient instead of being dropped off. They do produce this trickle of food over time. It's, it's strange, I keep seeing MBL rams going through the randomest of places. <laughs> yeah, another one here. He says to Scorpions, they will be useless. Oh, and he does with 3 HP. This is the second time we see one of MBL's unit leaving with just a little bit of HP left. Uh, Doubt only killed one villager so far. 
Will this ram also escape with one HP? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to to get Mango Meld. Oh yes, we see the the castle going for bite out. You can't win by staying on the defensive alone and let's see how things go here. This is so much army from MBL. Some conversions get in. Let's get some units and yeah, this is what we see. Oh, ooh, nice shot by the mango deck. A lot of light cap because the Khmer have so much food income that it's a lot easier to just spam light cav. Now we see that the pressure is starting to arrive at the main base and at the DC. Doubt, one of the main reasons why this game is still solid for Doubt. Look at the adult TC time. With, no, I mean, now it's two. But with two TCs and such a little idle TC time after 27 minutes, this castle did go up, kind of uncontested, and we see some ballista elephants. Yes, oh, ballista elephants can chop these trees, and they can make raiding so much easier. Because the world lines are a vital part of these walls. The crossbows there open the door, and ballista elephants are in, and this is a base trade kind of situation. The crossbows are here, being pressured, causing so much damage at the same time. And Doubt is over here, causing damage to MBL's economy. Both of them on the offensive. Uh, instead of being left side versus right side, now Doubt has the north, MBL has the south. And everything else is just scattered everywhere. We see the knights here, that's the one thing. Uh, knights by themselves can cause so much damage, the crossbows. If you start splitting them up too much, you can start losing the mass of units and once they get below a certain critical threshold, crossbows get a lot weaker. You need numbers. We see here the lone ballista elephant versus an army of villagers. Here we see the, the scouts uh, uh, causing some damage. The scouts go first for the conversions and the knights go in. And uh, the crossbow numbers are starting to get below that critical mass point. 13, yeah, the crossbows now are, now are a lot, are not scary at all. That's the problem with pressuring with crossbows. You start losing the numbers. Here, another. And this map is very uh, wide open. And this is why Kumera are great. All of these farms, this mill wouldn't even be needed. All of these farms are working with such a high efficiency. Ready. Of course, they are easy to raid, and we see here the crossbows getting so many ki 20 kills already, 20 villagers down. We see a castle from MBL trying to deny the Doubt Castle. Ooh, and the scouts here. Some crossbows trying to buy time. This is such a, a chaotic match. So many things are happening at the same So many engagements, Ready. some longbowmen by MBL. Look at the minimap. Everything is happening at oh, <laughs> and this, this is what an out castle is. This was not a true out castle. The other one that got cancelled was the out castle because it got cut. This is what that is famous for. <laughs> but right now, this is just production for MBL. His economy has has shifted elsewhere. But that's the thing. Uh, even though MBL has a lot more military count for doubt, the kind of nomadic game, game that this is becoming. Favors Doubt's playstyle. It favors the Khmer, it favors the cavalry, the disengagements, favors the scattered economy. The map right now is helping Doubt, Doubt save more than it is helping MBLs. Now these, the main base from MBL will get slowly destroyed. He's doing an amazing job here, microing with the crossbows to get the efficiency, but even though, with all said and done, Economic uh, is still kind of even, and military, we see MBL dominating, still. Even with all of this pressure, even with the, everything that's happening, what MBL is losing is map control. Only this corner is MBL, the rest of it is all uh, doubt. So, and we see so, so much production, so much food 
going in and and Bial has zero on food. The adult TC time is skyrocketing. Yeah, he can't find a way to stabilize his economy. It's a lot harder for the Britons to do it. He's losing the few farms he had over here due to losing his main base. And Bial has zero food production. So and Bial right now is the one on the clock because he can survive with this. He's adding more. He's just adding military. His eco is not increasing. And just one or two good scorpion shots, one or two good mangonel shots can make this army a lot less threatening. But MBL needs to cause damage, and he is causing a lot of damage. 64 villager kills for MBL. Ooh, but now his economy can't be replenished, and yes, MBL is killing a lot of villagers, but Doubt's villagers are. Once they go down, they are back up. Doubt keeps constant production of villagers. Well, MBL. Is more in an all-in offensive style. Every villager that falls is a huge blow. That's the main difference right here in this situation. NBL is in more of an all-in situation, even though his arm is a lot stronger. And doubt floating enough stone for two castles, and he adds two TCs. He's going all in with the macro. All lean with the yes, I will have economy and you won't. I have map control, I have units. This army is now all of them are quite low. Of course, the uh, cavalry are getting destroyed, but they do erode the arms slowly. The scorpions do find some shots. The, the three lines do make engagements more complicated. Yeah, but this. This is what's tricky about controlling archers. Yeah, you look away from one second, now they're starting to become low. The scouts restrict mobility. Oh, if there was a scout here blocking the path and then the scorpions could target. But that's easier said than done. NBL lost his base. Still, yeah, this is completely all in. Still 0 1 food for NBL. 81 villagers. Ready. Here we see some more pressure, oh nice, finding this uh, gold with, uh, with the longbowman and the villager lead, even though Doubt is producing a lot, for 4 TCs at the 38 minute mark with under 3 minutes of idle TC time, even though he's producing a lot, the villager count is still kinda even, due to all of MBL's pressure. MBL is lacking the, the final... Uh, Archer damage upgrade, which would further increase their range and damage. And also missing the Arbol. Oh, of course, he's. Uh, what am I saying? They are not in it yet. This game has been going on for so long, I assume players are both in it, they aren't. This is Castle Age versus Castle Age. Ooh, yeah. And the Scorpions causing so much. And now these crossbows are no longer threatening, but. While uh, Doubt is doing a great job with villager production, NBL is doing an amazing job with uh, crossbow production. This is 28 crossbowmen in queue. He needs to add more archery ranges. Look at this. <laughs> so one player going for the military approach. We do see a meal was added by NBL, so he's going to be able to add some villagers now. And this is still so even, the match. Both players we see two completely different playstyles. Doubt going for map control, going for the macro, going for economy, while MBL is constant military, being the aggressor, he does have some upgrades. We have a castle here from Doubt protecting this corner. MBL's army here, getting some pressure by the Scorpions. Yeah, this is when it starts getting scary when the sky Oh! Oh! That with the quick walls! Oh, this will be devastating! Oh! That was such... That was such a nasty quick wall! Such a small thing and look, for the first time, Doubt is the one with the military lead. That house there changed the game. What an amazing play! And... 
it's easy to do that when it's your only focus, but there's so much happening at the same time. Players are microing so many units, so many things happening. That house there was a huge blow. Sometimes some fast and amazing quick walls look impressive, but this was not super, just dropping a house, but it made such a huge difference. And now, since uh, Doubt does conquer the military lead, it's a lot harder to pressure with the crossbows. The crossbows need the mass, they need the military superiority. He does have some more longbowmen, some more crossbowmen on the queue, but the death ball was slowed down. We see Doubt adding some further upgrades. The scorpions are starting to reach a, 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 a dangerous mass. And of course, Khmer do have great scorpions. The archers are powerful for the Britons. I do wonder if any of them will think of Imp. Doubt, of course, wants the stone for some castles. If Doubt so sold some stone, Doubt is in a great position to click up to Imp. Well, MBL's economy now is a little bit more balanced, but he is behind 20 bills. Yeah, Doubt sells wood, he keeps the stone. The military is under pressure. Oof, oh, the mangonel spawning there, oh, all of the scorpions are going down. But at the same time, the light cav do find a lot of archers. The castle is helping, but a lot of archers went down. And if both players are losing a lot of units, this is good for, for doubt. This is what the cavalry player wants. The... Archer player wants to keep up mess, the cavalry player wants both of them to lose units, to do trades, to have smaller armies, because that way the cavalry player can then use mobility, can take better engagements, and I feel like this imp will be game deciding. The castles will start producing traps, and the L will start getting more and more pressure, he doesn't have the critical mess, and he's very far away from having a a good enough economy to come to him. Yeah, the, the, the mobility, just finding some kills, just keeping your opponent constantly on, on edge. MBL doing a great job with the military production. But one minute an imp will be reached. And 65 farms for Doubt. This is the power of Khmer. In such a messy map, they can do be so efficient with their farming. <laughs> I haven't decided what I'll use for a thumbnail yet, but this seems like a great idea. <laughs> Two more castles going up for Doubt. One on each side of the map. Securing the, the periphery, of course. The wood, one of the most important resources. MBL also adding one in the center, but Imp is reached. And now MBL is in such a tricky position. Because the Imp upgrades will start coming in, the traps can start coming out, and... Uh, MBL right now doesn't have a good army comp to, to fight against the traps. He can dive under the, the castles. Ready. Yeah, we see already one trap in queue, and GG is called. And we see I was complimenting MBL on the military production. Look at this, almost 300 crossbows, 50 longbowmen. But uh, yeah, it was a clash of two different styles. Now, it was victorious, but both of these players played amazingly. We see here the the, the worker efficiency, of course, for Doubt was, was a lot higher. That was the main difference. The... MBL doing an amazing job with the uh, Archer pressure, but Doubt... So many players will start fumbling against the Archers, missing uh, timing, starting having increasing adult TC time, then your opponent's economy starts ramping up against yours, and it's a snowball effect. Doubt did start with the early pressure, then MBL had the complete military control, but Doubt doing such an amazing job at keeping Eco up, at being efficient, at spreading out throughout the map, at adding some key castles. If this castle wasn't here, if MBL was safe at home behind all of this, 
then suddenly it's a lot easier for MBL to keep uh, up his economy and keep expanding the economy while he's in the pressure in the front. But Doubt, besides holding on, besides keeping adding villagers, he did also pressure MBL with the castles and very well played by both of them. Of course, MBL right now is the number one in the Empire Wars ladder, but yeah, when two players at this high level uh, face off against each other, is the details, is the execution, and I do feel like the fact that Doubt was the Khmer did play a huge role here. So yeah, as always, I'm the Nando. If you enjoyed this, remember to leave a like, leave a comment if you have any doubt, any doubt. <laughs> or if you want to ask anything, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.